bitch, I'm sorry I lost. Head down, X bill, break set off. Bitch, my phone that passed me a charge. So what's up, Snorty Do Crew? It's yours truly, Snorty Do. I'm trying to bring y'all some extra, some extra different content out here, bro. So this been sent to me a little bit. Like ten of you, ten of you boys sent this to me. Ten of you folks. I ain't gonna say boys, but ten of you folks sent this to me. But it's Channel Five with uh, Andrew Gulligan. Culligan, Andrew Culligan, or whoever's at the Channel 5 channel. If you don't like these type of videos produced by your boy Snore, please let me know. We'll personally, you know what I'm saying, take it down. We ain't got to do none of the strikes. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 right. We'll, I got y'all. You know, just hit me up. Email me down in the description. Instagram, one of the two. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, though, a lot of you guys sent me this. Well, a few of you guys sent me this. I'm going to go ahead and check it out. I get halfway. It's 22 minutes. If I get halfway to it, ain't nothing going on for real. You know what I'm saying? Just a, a casual vlog or whatever. Then yeah. Well, yeah. 10,000 likes on this one. You. Yeah. Like, like, I asked for a million likes. Like, what, what's up? What's up? Like, this motherfucker got 162,000 likes. I just asked for 10. And you niggas are <laughs> just killing me, big bro. Big bro, 10,000? That killing me, big bro. I can't do it. I can't do the 10,000 like. Can I? I'll give you, I'll give you 7,000. No, big bro. I can't do the 10, though. I just tweak on it. What's up? Oh, I say, it's me, JC and Buck. Play with us, you fuck. Put his body in the trunk, then we take him to the dump. And they know we play for keeps, and they know that we ain't sweep. Grab a broom, we finna sweep. O block finna clean the streets. Boy, you better grab a heat or get put up on a T. Put your name by RIP or your name get turned to weed. In the racket, ain't no pad. Any state, we on your. No matter where, nigga, plan. Fuck the. Uh, we ain't goofy do that crash. We okay. gon' spin and spin again. We gon' hit our last friends. We gon' show him we ain't playing. We gon' leave him where he stand. That's really, yeah, that's all I wanna be successful. Right, big goof ass. Them the youngins over there. Them the youngins. The yeah. Man, check it out. Yeah. 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 Y
But yeah, that's the embodiment of just drill music, Andrew. Yeah. You know, a hyper violent offshoot of trap generally that, you know, sort of like came out of a very specific area. I describe drill music as it's violent, but mainly fiction. It's like realistic fic fiction music. So, like, this why I shot my video, 4K Troll, shot it right here in this park. Right here where you standing that I shot it right here. The, uh, the lyrics are pretty intense in that song. Grab my clock, then I grab my mask and hop out, then I blast. But he ain't like, he pulled out his strap and started shooting back. It sound like it's compact to my got to double back, it's finna crack. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's all entertainment, you know what I'm saying? It's all for, for like, the people. Like, cause, like, music nowadays is all about, like, Controversial shit. Drama. Drama really makes money. Back to that breaking news live from Chopper nah, to a real. mass shooting. At least six. I don't know why everybody want to see the, the car crash. Everybody want to see the plane crash. You know, I don't know what it is. People shot. Hell, I ain't indulge too, so you know, I ain't just throwing shit out there that I ain't. You know what I mean? It's all happening at 65th and King Drive in Parkway Gardens. So, what was it like growing up in O Block? We had to grow up. We had to really grow up and grow up fast. All that little boy shit went out the window. Everybody around this bitch got PTSD. Everybody around this bitch seen somebody die. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we had a brotherhood that can nobody come between. We, we not let nothing happen to none of us. Malo couldn't even beat up OD. We gonna fuck Malo ass up, boy. You better not put your hands on folks, boy. Fuck them, pull a pipe out, hold on. And it's the same way, like, we got each other, boy. I'm old girl, we ain't got no deities. I'm BDN. What, what can you tell us about the year uh, 2011? 2011? I uh, uh, I experienced like my first um, first friend get killed. Uh, my my best friend Od, he died in 2011. In 2011, a Parkway Gardens resident named Od Perry, which Oblock's now named after, was murdered, gunned down just outside the gates of Parkway Gardens. What was one of your favorite memories of you and uh, Od? Yeah. You know, Man, I got a lot of them bitches on oh. <laughs> He had this crazy ass dog named 50, bro. On J Money, bro. I was scared of that motherfucker, bro. Oh, oh, uh, like play with the dog. On key down my boy, I ain't playing with that motherfucking dog, bro. Y'all tripping. Motherfucker run up on me. Ah, boy, boy, boy. Ah, it's your bitch ass on. Oh. Right now, to the day, I still don't play with people's dogs. I don't give a fuck if that bitch a chihuahua. Bro, get your dog for that bitch die. I'm gang. OD's murder was allegedly in retaliation for the murder of- Bro, you can't be laughing at shit like that, but it's funny as fuck. Oh, boo, boo, boo. All right, that motherfucker. I'm supposed to be laughing, but it's funny as fuck, bro. Shondale Tuka Gregory, a rival gang member who lived just a few blocks away on 63rd. You know the sad get your dog for a dog. I just hit my first child and everything. I'm really like traumatized. Like, I ain't know if was I supposed to crash out or fall back. And my mom used to be talking to me like, man, you got a daughter. Don't be like these niggas, don't die. How many uh, friends do you think you've lost since then? Over 10 dead on this game. Like, two motherfuckers a year. I swear to God. Owen Platoon and motherfucking 11. Gerard and Whitey and 12. We got LA and J Money and, and motherfucker died in 13. My, my crowd gone. I gotta hang with up on them. I gotta hang with up on them. I ain't gonna stunt. When, when, it seemed like when folks died, folks' career took off. When old passed away, folks took that shit to another level. Chief Keith and Dirt and them came out. They lit this bitch up, you feel me? So it's like. Shortly after Odie's murder, a close friend of his decided to make his first song, which would serve as an O Block anthem, to celebrate the life of OD and this Shondale Tuka Gregory. This friend was named Keith Cozart, aka Chief Keith. Hit a nigga up on Gilfark, I do drugs to Long D. O Block, we see bitch. bitch. Middle fingers to Shondale. Chief I get out. On my son, I get out. October 4th, 2011. This bitch get the going up. The block bust him, I just got out. I get out, I see Patone and White White. Fools got cocky as hell. I'm looking, I'm like, how the fuck y'all let OD get killed? Patone put his head down. He like, man, go take your daughter upstairs. I'm finna holler at you. I take my daughter up. I remember Inky Dino came up there. Deep as hell, everybody coming eight. Happy as hell. Fat Mac and Stu get the showing out. They get the fight. Hey, hey, Fat Mac. You remember I got out of jail, you want Stu start fighting that day? Him and Stu get the fight. Hey, phone them like, man, y'all showing out because folks just got out. Uh, uh, Dirk and Reese come see me. Oh, I'm all right. I'm like, I feel in love like a motherfucker. I'm damn. Fold them. Fold them come rap with me. I'm that. Like, fuck old guy. How the fuck old guy? You know? You know they rapping with me. Boom, 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 boom. We talking all us and that bitch crying now. 
I'm like, damn. I just got out, we all crying right now. I'm like, the fuck, I'm fuck that, we ain't crying, we out here, we get outside. In the next two years, Chief Keef would go from a young O-Block rapper to one of the most commercially successful rappers in the world, with hits like I Don't Like and Hate Being Sober. Chief Keith made it more like global. And before you knew it, white America was doing the hokey pokey to murder music and unknowingly singing along to the anthems of an actual gang war playing out in real time. For a year, the conflicts of Oblock were a mystery to the general public. That was until one man came around and exposed the inner workings of Chicago's gang war to the world. So 2010-2011, I'm in college and I'm doing commentary about hip hop. I had like, you know, some hot takes about like Kanye and Drake and stuff like that at the moment. So I was kind of gaining an audience. And I remember when the drill scene popped off and I remember doing a video on Keith and I was like, I love the music. I'm reading the comments and everyone was like, you're not telling the full story. Okay, because like I I'm going in there and I'm doing a quick video and I'm like, yo, all his ops is dead. You know what I mean? He's dissing them. It's over. You know what I mean? Like these guys, we don't even need to know their names. And everyone was like, well, no, they're not dead. And actually, the guys who, who he's dissing just killed his guys. They were talking about people like Lil J. They were talking about like the FBG gang. Nigga, fuck T-Roy and OD them dead bitches. I'm like, yo, nobody. Hear me out. Out of all the FBG duck songs, he picks that one. THAT PARTICULAR PART OF THE SONG He could have picked up I said I wasn't going to diss it there Uh uh no I didn't or some shit What did he say at the beginning? He ain't say nobody Right actually right before that part Hear me out when I say this I ain't trying to start nothing I'm just Noticing shit Why would he pick that part Of that song To present to present. It's kind of mind boggling. I just, no food for thought type shit, you know? Yeah. Everybody knows these people, like, respectively, because they don't have a hit song. Chief Keef is going crazy with hit songs. So I made this page called The Warren Shot Racket, and I started covering basically just constant feuds that were happening. It's your boy DJ Academics, and now information has come to my attention. Now, y'all know I call Lil Reese the Chirac Grim Reaper. Well, pretty much because every time you look through his mentions, you see a bunch of dead niggas. CBS Chicago is reporting that a 15 year old boy, aka Lil Nick from Six Hunter, was shot multiple times and then he was brought to a hospital where he was pronounced dead by the Cook County Medical Examiner. At least he died doing what he loved best. Someone actually told me that these guys actually keep score on killing and coonery with. Than Chirac. The most valuable coon is probably a legit award. The Warren Chirac never stops. The coonery never fucking ends. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. His Warren Chirac series went viral, and the fans were now aware of the ongoing Chicago gang war, particularly as it pertained to the rappers involved. How many people do you think have died in the Warren Chirac? Thousands. This past weekend, at least 52 people were shot, eight of them killed. In the following years, between 2011 and 2020, 5,518 people were murdered in Chicago. To the amusement of self-proclaimed Chiracologists, who created a Reddit page, which now has over 175,000 members. But I'd never seen a place where life was that This past weekend, at least 52 people were shot, eight of them killed. In the following years, between 2011 and 2020, 5,518 people were murdered in Chicago. To the amusement of self-proclaimed Chiracologists, who created a Reddit page, which now has over 175,000 members. But I'd never seen Bro. a place where life was... I'm gonna tell you something about that Reddit page. If y'all not on that Reddit page, bro, you'll see some shit that you just thought you... I seen a real live baby picture of Duck. He was like three or four. I would have never saw that. I don't know how they got a hold of it. Probably off his mom's Instagram. And I'm sitting thinking or whatever social media she used. But a real live baby picture. They get, they get just, just tweets from out of nowhere. 
Every so often, I catch myself on that motherfucker, bro. And I just be looking just, damn, damn. How y'all find this shit right there? Like, I really just be, yeah. Value less than Chicago. To this day, I've never been to Chicago because of that. I feel like things bad everywhere. Things just bad in Chicago because, like, this shit came like a movie to people. Like, when it first got famous, people started, like, it was like we was characters. Like, damn, like, you got me look like an assassin. Drilling itself is an energy that once people latch onto that shit and you become invested in the story, it's like a soundtrack to a movie, and, and it sounds bad to say, but it's a soundtrack to a movie that you're watching live. You know, I'm looking at this not like on some voyeuristic, like, yo, oh shit, this is like entertaining. I'm like horrified. What I try to do is satire, hoping people could look at them and be like, that looks ridiculous. These dudes, like, they're disgusting, right? People took it and they ran with it. Everything I thought that people would be like, Yo, this is some sick shit they loved. We have a bloodthirsty audience, especially in music. The more people die, when someone gets locked up, their streams are through the roof. Music sales, <whistles> going through the roof. Trust me. I was a driving force in getting some of these guys, other than Keith, eyes and attention and ears to some of the, their stuff. Did you feel responsible for like inflaming gang tension on the streets by covering things? Hell no. But l let me tell you this, accountability is hard to take, man. They say, yo, well, you gave people nicknames. And when you gave someone a nickname of Grim Reaper, some other guy is going to start killing more to try to get that nickname. And I'm like, I don't believe I caused any murder, but if, you, if my videos, because they were popular, instigated any two parties, I'll take blame for that. But motherfucker, if you picked up the gun, I'm not taking blame for what you did, right? When I started covering Warren Chirac, niggas was dying every day already. I was on Twitter watching people bleed out. And I was like, I can't believe this is... Like, people getting shot like dogs. Bleeding down, everybody filming it. And then you go on social media and everybody's saying, I'm smoking on the pack. So you got to take blame for, for you doing that. The parents got to take blame for not being in the kid's life. The cops got to take blame for them basically just like throwing their hands up in the air and saying, let everybody kill each other. Like, these motherfuckers that like... Everybody wants an easy scapegoat. Listen, stop acting like a bitch ass nigga and just fight, bro. Leave the pipes alone, fight, 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 fight. Oh, it's so fucked up now, it's like a 12 year old just said, oh, I'll pop you. So not a 12 year old. You're like, bro, just fight him. Why do you think that happens? Cause yeah, motherfucker think it's about being a shooter or a killer. Music played a part. But music won 100% why everybody doing this. It's your fucking mama and your fucking daddy. You get what I'm saying? It's your mama and your daddy, bro. It's not, it usually be your environment, but it's your mama and your fucking daddy. It's about how you getting raised, blood. Like, raise your fucking kids right. Oh, oh. I don't think it's drill music at all, I promise you. If, if we was to take drill music away right now, and it be regular hip hop, it's still gonna be the same type of violence. Everybody wants to be, everybody wanna be a character now for the internet. On social media, beefing, making threats, making crazy comments, like going on live, you know, it's like, you know, waving the gun in the fucking camera. Um, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's, it's almost like a competition to see who can push it the furthest and get the most attention. Because, you know, th there is a fair amount of clout chasing and, you know, that is a toxic element. In that way, do you think that drill is like bad for society? No, because the thing is like the the realities of what is being discussed in that music was, was there before the music was there. The music is just an expression of that, it's just a reaction to that. Like when you're talking about inner city gun violence, you're talking about poverty, you're talking about poor education systems, you're talking about like low access to food, you're talking about low economic opportunities. Those are the kinds of solutions that you would need to apply to that situation. If you could go back in time, would you make Warren Chirac again? You know, you know I've grown, was it appropriate? Probably wouldn't do that again. I wouldn't do it again just because um, I think we're dealing with mental illness in Chicago. And when you see people are kids, these people who are doing murders, like Rondo number nine was like 17, doing drills and all that type of shit. It's easy to be outraged and also say, damn, how could you guys take a life so easily? But 
Also, you got to think about the cycle of mental issues that they're having, the trauma that they're suppressing. After the success of the War in Chirac series, Academics Formula was replicated hundreds of times, creating a concentrated YouTube algorithm that turned gang drama into an online mega industry. One of the channels in this algorithm is called No Jumper, which is quite different from the War in Chirac, but nonetheless features many interviews with gang-related rappers. Do you even know about gang shit when you first moved to Florida? When did you actually become a 5-5 crip? You are widely known to be associated with the Hoovers. Some of the dudes who got caught up for this murder are like actual rappers who have videos out with, with many, many thousands of views. Again, like you say a lot of the stories are hypothetical, but in this, this one, you actually mentioned that a specific rapper from Chicago called a girl six times while you were hanging out with her. Right. It just ran. You see what I'm saying? The okay. shit just because, man, you know. So, I went on the podcast and spoke to the host, Adam22, about the ethics of producing monetized gang content. Do you think drill music is uh, bad for society? Yeah, definitely. How come? Because people are in gangs killing each other and making songs about it and making it sound super cool. And even me as like a 30 year old fucking white man, I listen to it and I think that it sounds kind of cool and I, I struggle with that. But definitely I think it's probably, as much as I like listen to it, it's probably gotta be a net negative for society, right? Do you just, just the romanticization of violence in general. Do you think you help make it look cool? Mm, I don't know. I feel like when they're on a beat with a fucking 808 going crazy and they're able to like rhyme and make less sense that that probably is like when it sounds coolest. Because they don't really talk about that in interviews, right? I mean, most of like the, all the Chicago like gang members or whatever, it's like the amount of like street shit you're going to be able to get them to talk about in an interview is pretty minimal in comparison to the stuff that they're essentially saying in their songs. It just must be crazy because like you talk to so many people who like have died recently like you're what you're like the last person to interview um fbg cash right there his name's on the wall yeah mm -hmm. do you feel any responsibility for like inflaming like gang beef by having so many gang members use this platform to promote themselves no because i mean i feel like this is a hip-hop platform that long ago has kind of been clear to me that that's more or less the the gist of what we're doing you know like there was a long time where i didn't do any street shit you know in the beginning it was mostly like soundcloud type stuff and more like avant-garde you know internet shit we've gone more in that direction and like a lot of like it's also the direction rap's gone in it's it's tough to get away from the fact that the fans just want what they want you know as a content creator you kind of have to follow the incentives to a certain extent it's just been taken to the point where the fans like want this shit to be real they don't want to hear you say <laughs> I'll, I'll shoot you if, you if you come near me. They want to hear you say, so-and-so from the other side got killed because he fucked with me. Like the fans are really drawn to that kind of immersion, I guess. Whenever you grew up here, did you guys spend a lot of time in other parts of Chicago? Like, did you ever go like downtown or to other areas or were you mostly here? Man, I spent a lot of years inside this gate. Have you been to a, like, a Cubs game or anything? No. You guys want to go to the White Sox game with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah we go. go. White Sox for White Sox! What's fucking White Sox? Go Sox! Yeah! Fuck the Cubs, fuck the Orioles, fuck the Yankees, White Sox. White Sox! 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 They represent the South Side pride, that blue collar man. Like, the South Side's way better than the North Side. And you wear condoms unless you have to. <laughs> What's the situation in which you'd have to use a condom? Every time. Never. Never. <laughs> I'm married, What's so I haven't actually used condoms in 15 years. <laughs> Raw dog stands for Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow only. Sorry. Boss Top, what, what do you think about condoms? What I think about condoms? I got six kids right there. Raw dog, all day long. Jack Harlow is not my type. What makes White Sox fans different from other fans? Sometimes they wear white socks, but not on a regular basis. Loyalty. Why? Why? Are you guys from Chicago? No. No? no? Exactly. You're... What do you think your most controversial opinion is? Like, what do you mean about that? For example, I believe that aliens have visited the United States of America. Nice. So do I. Uh -huh. I also believe that the Earth is not, it's not round. I also believe that the government is hiding out of ship mods. I also believe that the government has taken over our 
you know, our country. And like, you think the earth is flat for real? Huh? You think the earth is I flat? I mean, we have... I Cheddar cheese. He's alright. Can... I don't know. You wanna hear my whole philosophy? Yeah. Yeah. You just... Want to go through? Same team? My team. I'm really push out to him. So, long story short, so it basically was about drill music in a sense. And truth be told, a lot of people have the right opinions of drill music. Um, you kind of started off with, you got you kind of started off with talking about what drill music make you feel like and stuff like that. And you know, a lot of people had their own. You know, I gave my opinion on that too. But he also talked about um, basically the consequences of this drill music shit. Let me go and say my piece. You know what I'm saying? Without the drill music, I feel like a lot of people would have still kind of passed away. Niggas been gang ganging before this music, right? But I'd also think that the music helped magnify a lot of shit to the point where the whole world is listening to this shit. Cause trust and believe niggas like Dirt, Chief Keef, Vine, Duck, all that, got fans in other countries. Them niggas in other countries, be on that too. If y'all think UK is sweet, y'all tripping. If y'all think Brazil is sweet, you're tripping. If you think these other fucking countries are sweet, you're, you're tripping. What I'm trying to get to is, I feel like uh, the drill music accelerated a lot of shit. Hell, I'm going to take it a step further. I feel like the fans instigated a lot of shit, too. Because a lot of these niggas, a lot of these niggas was talking about how they was going to chill. Like how Duck did. Like how Dirk said he ain't mentioning no more dead people. A lot of these niggas said, oh, I'm chill, I'm chill, I'm chill, I'm just focus on my shit. All it takes is somebody sl sl slicks mentioning something and the fans going to amplify it to the maximum. So the fans, I feel like, had some shit to, you know, accelerate this shit, magnify the shit, amplify the shit, you know. Hey, I think the blogs do too. Am I part of the blogs? Am I part of the niggas to make the rapping meters? Niggas just make the motherfuckers. I mean, niggas make the motherfuckers. I'll just sit here and, like a better words, just watch this shit. I ain't, hey, you could throw me in as, as part of this shoot too. I don't, you know what I mean? Because the shit going to still keep going on whether motherfuckers like it or love it or hate it. That's the one thing about it. Whether motherfuckers like it, love it or hate it, this shit going to still keep on fucking rolling. So that's why I'm really not trying to dive too deep in, oh, we need to change, we need to... No. This shit going to keep on rolling. Trust. Believe me. Other than that, though, man, let me know how y'all feel about this video down in the comment section down below. Other than that, though, it's your boy Snore. I'm gone, man.